I kept meditating on it. Certainly there's so much more that can be added. But I want to add a, a teaching today under the title of Feed the Greatness in You. Can you say that with me? Say, feed the greatness in you. Or let's personalize it and say, feed the greatness in me. And let, then let's make it corporate and say, feed the greatness in us. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's go over to the second letter of Corinthians chapter 5. As we begin to look at feed the greatness in you. The Apostle Paul, in his second letter to the church at Corinth, begins to expound and, and help the church there understand the magnitude of what Jesus Christ has done in his life, his death, his burial, and his resurrection. And in the fifth chapter of the letter, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, we find these words, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Now, now there, there, there was a time when I, I used to try to make, make a grammatical correction to this scripture at the last portion where it says all things are become new. I wanted to say all things have become new, Pat, like past tense. But in the, rea in the reality of our walk with God, things are always present. Things are always present. Things are always now, yes? The, 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 we, we, we talk about God, we talk about God today, yesterday, and forever, but he's always a right now God. He's always ready right now to be whatever we need to be when we need to be it in more than enough than we could ever ask for or believe for. Glory, hallelujah. So I begin to understand that if I am in Christ, then I am in Christ right now. Can I get an Amen. If you're in Christ, you're in Christ right now. The moment that you say, Jesus, come into my heart, come into my life and save me, Jesus makes you brand new and you are a child of God and you're a child of God forevermore and it doesn't make a difference how long a time frame you're still going to be a, right, a child of God right now. The, 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 our culture right now has this, this mantra of living in reality, living in the now, living in the reality. I mean, you know, okay, let, let's make it real. Our reality is right now. And so here the Word of God tells us, therefore. Now, you know you don't start off a conversation with therefore. That means there was something that was said above, above this that it relates to, and then this is the kind of summation, and therefore. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. Go with me in your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. As we, as we build this, this message, I, I need to give you a number of scripture so that you don't just say that this is something that Pastor Coles is talking about. I need for you to see this from God's word. Feed the greatness in you. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16 says this. Know ye not that you are the temple of God? You can stop right there and just start thinking about it. Know you not, do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? The Apostle Paul is, is asking us a profound question. Do you realize who lives on the inside of you? That you are the house, you're the dwelling place, you're the sanctuary, you're the temple? of the Spirit of God. Go with me 
to 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Feed the greatness in you. He goes on in his second letter to give more revelation. Now, you have to realize Paul was a brilliant man intellectually. And so God was able to bring some revelation forth to us that he was not able to bring through Peter, James, and John, not because they, they, were, they were, you know, um, not qualified, but they weren't really qualified intellectually they didn't have the the insight and understanding for for God to bring forth some revelation so God uses the apostle Paul's natural knowledge to begin to bring forth some supernatural revelation and so he says this here in 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 14 be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness and what communion hath light with darkness? Oh, hallelujah. And what concord hath Christ, the anointed one, with his anointing with Balial or Balial? Hallelujah. Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? He's asking these questions. He's saying, wait a minute. The God who is holy and righteous and all-powerful and all-knowing and everywhere present is dwelling on the inside of you now if you be in Christ. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, if Jesus Christ has become your Lord and Savior, you are a new creation. You are a born-again human being divine. You're human, but you have the God of all creation living on the inside of you and you need to understand there's some new parameters there's some new guidelines that you need to start living by and here are some of them that you can't do the things that you used to do if you want the greatness of the one who's on the inside of you to come forth you have to make some adjustments and he said you can't be hanging out with ungodliness because you've been made righteous. You've been given the gift of righteousness. So you need to understand what the responsibility of that is all about. And, you, you can, and you, you're the light of the world that Jesus declared. We, we did a study on ye are the light of the world. Now that you're the light of the world, you need to understand light and darkness can't commingle. Something is going to give. He says... As God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. As God hath said, I will dwell in them and I will walk in them and I will be their God and they shall be my people. Feed the greatness in you. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate. Oh, ouch, ouch, ouch. Saith the Lord, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Woo, glory, hallelujah, hallelujah. Feed the greatness in you, hallelujah. Oh, I'm going to give you some scriptures because I want you to think that this is just some, you know, nice little sermon that I came up with. No, this sermon is from the Lord. Go with me. To John, to go over to John's Gospel, chapter 14. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, say hallelujah. Come on, say hallelujah. St. John, chapter 14, verse 26. I'm, I'm going to read from the Amplified Classic, the original uh, classic Amplified Bible. It, it says here, but the Comforter, Counselor, Helper, intercessor, advocate, strengthener, standby, 
the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, in my place, to represent me and act on my behalf, he will teach you all things, and he will cause you to recall, will remind you of, bring to your remembrance everything I have told you. Glory, hallelujah. Well, now, you're putting that in context, remember, this is in that chapter where Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you that where I am there you may be also. We always use that, you know, when we're talking about transition. Glory to God. But Jesus, in the same, in the context of this, he said, look, I'm not going to leave you by yourself. I've got to go back. I'm completing my assignment here on earth, but I'm not going to leave you, but I'm going to leave you, but I'm not going to leave you by yourself. And he says it in verse 16 of that same chapter, he said, but I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth them not, neither knoweth them, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you and then he expounds a little further and says he's the comforter he's the counselor he's the strengthener he's the standby he's your helper he's your intercessor he's your life coach he is God he is me in the person of the spirit of our father father son holy ghost And he's going to be with you. And they're wondering, Lord, because Philip had said, Lord, you're going to leave us? Where, can you, where are you going that we can't go? And how are you going to be with us if you're going to leave us? And, and they're all pondering this, this whole concept. How, how is God going to do it? How are you going to do this, Lord? You've been with us, and, and you've provided for us. You've shown us the Father and, and everything that we've needed. At any point in time, you've been more than enough. And how are you going to leave us and still be with us? He said, the comforter, the comforter. Turn to somebody and say, the comforter. Hallelujah, the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. Go with me to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 4, as we walk through this expression and we understand. Feed the greatness in you. This is a personal message from God to you personally. Now, it's collectively being delivered to everybody in here, but you have to receive this message personally for you. As if no one else is in the room, this message is personally for you. Again, from the Amplified Classic, says this, then Jesus was led, guided by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness, the desert, to be tempted, tested, and tried by the devil. And he went and went without food for 40 days and 40 nights, and later he was hungry. And the tempter came and said to him, if thou, if you are God's son, command these stones to be made loaves of bread. But he replied, it has been written, man shall not live and be upheld and sustained by bread alone, but by every word that cometh forth from the mouth of God. I need you to repeat this with me. Say, by every word that cometh forth from the mouth of God. By every word that cometh forth from the mouth of God. One more time. By every word that cometh forth from the mouth of God. Man shall not live by natural food alone, but by every word that cometh forth out of the mouth of God. Somebody say, feed the greatness in me. Greatness. 
by every word that cometh forth from the mouth of God. Jesus said, even though I'm at the brink of starvation naturally, I can be sustained even in this moment by a word from God. Because there's enough power in the word to sustain me spirit, soul, and body. Even at my point of starvation, I haven't had a morsel to eat in 40 days. I haven't had a drop of water in 40 days. And yet, in this moment, I will not yield to your temptation and to tempt me to step over into my deity, into my relationship as the son of God. Because if I wanted to, I could turn these stones into bread because I am God. And that was one of the things that Satan could not comprehend and did not understand how Jesus was here as a mortal man, anointed by God. And so every time that he tempted him, he tempted him as the son of God. And Jesus responded as anointed man. By every word, that comes out of the mouth of God feed the greatness in you go with me over to Romans chapter 12 somebody say transformation come on say transformation Romans chapter 12 verses 1 and 2 from the King James reads I beseech you I beg you I plead with you I'm, I admonish you with everything that is within me. If, if I could convince you of something that is vitally important, brethren, be by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. You are the temple of God. Present your body as the dwelling place where God's residency is. Present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. It's the thing that we ought to do just because we ought to do, because we ought to do it, because God has done something that is so exceedingly abundantly above all we could ever ask, think, or imagine. We ought to do it. We ought to present our bodies as living sacrifices. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, I present myself to you. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Feed the greatness in you. So that you can prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. That God wants to manifest himself to you and through you. The way he did with Jesus. Hallelujah. He manifested himself to him and then through him. First 30 years, he was with him, but nobody really understood it because, hey, he looked, walked about just like a, everybody else. And it wasn't until the appointed time that that anointing of the Holy Ghost came upon him and he went about preaching and teaching and healing all who were oppressed of the devil because God was with him. Feed the greatness that's in you. Philippians 413, we love this scripture. I can do all things through Christ, through the anointed one with his anointing, through the God man, the anointing. This Christ is not Jesus' last name, it is his identification as the Messiah. God with us, God for us. The anointed one with his anointing. And so the the reality is, you can through Christ. I said, you can through Christ. Because of the relationship, the mystery of Christ. Because it was God's intention to be one with you and me in a new birth. 
a new creation that has never ever existed before. Oh, he made the first Adam, but the second he even made better than the first. Oh, come on, somebody. Because the first one can make a mistake, but God fixed it up where the second one can't make that, mess, that same mistake and be lost again because there's a, a new birth. There's a new position where God is on the inside of it, and he has paid the price now and forever for all those who will yield to him and feed the greatness. Feed the greatness that he is in you. Now, I'm not talking about feeding the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is, is the totality of God. He don't need no correction. He's God. He's perfect, holy, righteous. I'm talking about feeding your born again spirit in connection with your soul, your mind. Let, let, let me go back and read to you. When I looked up that word mind, in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, that Greek word for mind is no say, no sis. It's spelled N O U S and pronounced N O O C E. And it means your intellect, divine and human, your human intellect coming in connection and harmony with God's divine intellect in thought, feeling, and in your will. Not my will, but your will. It means understanding. That there's an understanding. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed, transformed by the renewing of your mind, your will, your feelings, your total psyche. Suke in the Greek. Your soul. There's a transformation. Even though we are saved, we are in the process of tr transformation of the psyche. Knowing God and knowing who we are in him. The, the old hard drive has to be washed away and the new hard drive has to be reprogrammed with the truth of God's word. Feed the greatness in you through the renewing of your mind so that you can think like your Savior. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Put on the mind of Christ. Take on his emotions, his feelings, his compassion, his love. Present your body a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto him. Feed the greatness in you. And as we feed our born-again spirits, the word of God, it is written, it is written, it is written, this book of the law, shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night to observe to do all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success, Joshua. Feed the greatness that's in you. I know you saw the greatness that was in Moses, but now I'm getting ready to bring forth your greatness, but here's what I need for you to do. Take my word and feed into your spirit. And it's not even born again, but because you will do it in faithfulness and obedience to me, I will count it as righteousness for you. Feed my word and watch me, Gideon, take you from a, somebody that has a low self-esteem into one who can be used to overcome the enemy with a handful of people. Come on, someone. God is able to take little and turn it into much when we place it into the master's hand, when we feed on what he says. Not what the devil says. Not even what the doctor says. 
Not even what a husband or a wife says, a wayward person or a, 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 a government official. When we feed upon what God says concerning the circumstance, the situation, the greatness of our God is made manifest and made known, and we become trophies over the temptations, the tests, the trials, the tribulations. We become trophies of triumph as we let go and let God, as we say what God says. Deuteronomy 28 one says this, if you will listen diligently to the voice of the Lord your God, being watchful to do all his commandments, which I command you this day, the Lord your God will set you on high above all nations of the world. Hallelujah. And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you if you hear, if you hear it and heed it and you do the voice of the Lord your God. Hallelujah. Blessed shall you be in the city and blessed shall you be in the field. Blessed shall you be, be the fruit of your body and the fruit of your ground and the fruit of your body beast, or your, your dog will be blessed. Your, glory to God, your cat will be blessed. Your bird will be blessed. Everything that you own will be blessed because the blessing of God blesses. Hallelujah. You carry the blessing. You carry the anointing. You carry the greatness. Glory to God. Jesus got blessed everybody around him. Glory. That's why they thronged him. They came from north, south, east, and west. They got in boats and followed him across the, the, the Sea of Galilee. Glory to God because they knew that there was an anointing upon him to bless their lives. And God said, I'll do the same thing for you if you receive the greatness that I have for you. I'm no respecter of persons. I'm a respecter of faith and love. And I love you just as much as I love him. And that's why I gave him for you so that you could operate in my glory like he did. The increase of your cattle and the young of your flock. Blessed shall you be be in the basket in the store, your checking accounts, your saving accounts, your CDs, glory, hallelujah. I will bless you. Blessed shall you be when you come in and blessed shall you be when you go out, hallelujah. The Lord shall cause your enemies who rise up against you to be defeated before your face. They shall come against you one way and flee before you seven ways. The Lord shall command. He will command. He will command. He won't just ask. He won't just make a suggestion. He will command the blessing upon you in your storehouses and in your undertaking. Glory to God. And he will bless you in the land which the Lord your God gives to you. The Lord will establish you as a people holy to himself the children of God, the chosen generation, the royal priesthood, the holy nation, the set apart people to show forth the praises of him who have called you out of the darkness into his marvelous light. He shall make you his. Hallelujah. And all people of the earth shall see that you are called by the name and in the presence of the Lord. And they shall be afraid of you. Glory, hallelujah. They'll know that your God is God and you are nobody to be messed with. Glory to God. God will fight your battles. Glory to God. You won't have to do anything but be still and see the glory of the Lord. Your God, hallelujah. Glory to God. Because blessed are the peacemakers. They shall be called the children, the sons of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Feed the greater one on the inside of you. And the Lord shall make you have surplus of prosperity through the fruit of your body, of your livestock, and of your ground and the land which the Lord swear by your fathers to give you. The Lord shall open to you his good treasury. Hallelujah. The heavens to give the rain of, of your land and in its season and to bless all the work of your hands. And you shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, glory to God. Feed the greatness in you that God wants you blessed enough that you can 
bless other people and you don't ever have to worry about giving out of your need. You're giving out of your supply. You're giving out of your overflow because he's the God who is exceeding abundantly above all you could ask, think, or imagine if you will feed the greatness in that born-again spirit. Glory to God so that you, the born-again spirit and the Holy Ghost can hook up and become one and whatsoever things you ask in faith and believe that you receive and not doubt but believe that those things when you declare you have it ye shall have it said the Lord God said it I said God said it and that settles it glory to God we got to believe it we got to feed the greatness on the inside we've been made in the image and likeness of God you got to believe that you got to believe that the same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead dwells on the inside of you and he will quicken and make alive your mortal body. You got to believe it. You got to feed the greatness on the inside of you. Hallelujah. And the Lord, the Lord shall make you the head and not the tail above and not above only and you shall not be beneath if you heed the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you this day and are watchful to do them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's time, it's time, it's time to step in and step into the greatness that God has for you and to feed upon what God's word says over your circumstance, over your situation, whatever's going on, what the enemy is trying to bring in. It's a lie. It's a lie for the pit of hell. It's time out for buying the lie. It's time to exalt the word of God in your own heart and in your own mind and let God be God and let his enemies be scattered. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's time, it's time, it's time, hallelujah. It's your time, it's your time, it's our time, glory to God. Let God arise and his enemies be scattered, hallelujah. Sit down, I got one more, one more passage of scripture, hallelujah. Glory to God, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Time out. Time out for being with me. Time out for not believing. Hallelujah. But it's time to keep the devil under your feet. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, we thank you. He said, now you should not turn. Don't turn to the right or the left from the word of God. God said it, that settles it. God said it, that settles it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Take me over to Romans chapter 8. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, Pastor Cole, that's the Old Testament. That was, talk, that was, talking, about, that was talking about the children of Israel. Well, let's go on over to the New Testament. Romans chapter 8. Hallelujah. Now, I want you to do me. I got enough time to do this. Start me off, start me off in Romans chapter 8, verse 26. Hallelujah. And we're going we gonna to finish this thing on up. And, and we're going to shout to victory. Anybody ready to shout your victory? Anybody ready to say, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. There is greatness that you have proclaimed over my life, and I speak it. I confirm it. I agree, yes, Lord, to your will and your way. Hallelujah. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. He, told, he put his spirit on the inside of you. God, Holy Spirit, living on the inside. Jesus is seated at the right hand of majesty on high. And he's watching and expecting us to keep his enemy as his footstool. He defeated him. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy, render powerless the work of the enemy over us. But well, how many know sometimes we need some help? Come on, how many know you need you, come on, you sometimes you, you need a little help. You need a little help. He said, I will not leave you comfortless. I'm gonna give you the Holy Ghost. 
I'm going to give you the comforter, the counselor, the strengthener, the helper, the standby. I'm going to give you my spirit to work on your behalf and secure your victory in every circumstance and situation of your life. But sometimes we just don't know enough. Sometimes even we, we don't know how to pray as we ought to. So, so, so the Apostle Paul told the Romans and he told us, likewise the Spirit also helpeth, there he is, the helper, helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit, Holy Ghost, itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Sometimes you, you, it may not be the, it, it, articulate language. It may not be oh most gracious Heavenly Father. It might be Lord oh Lord oh oh ah, oh Lord sometimes it's just a cry. It's a cry and a moan. It's a groan but God knows exactly the meaning of our groans and our moans. He knows when we cry out oh Jesus oh Lord oh, oh. he knows knows what's behind that glory to God and he says I got you I'll take care of you come on confess my word feed your greatness with my word so I can show up and show out hallelujah verse 27 and he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the spirit because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. When we yield, when we allow the Holy Ghost to do a good work in us, when we allow him to help us to overcome our ignorances, our weaknesses, our inability, our humanness, glory to God, we step over into Christ-likeness. He is God working his good will and good pleasure in us, for us, and through us for, he, for whom he did foreknow. He also did predestinate to be conformed, to be conformed, to be conformed, to be molded and shaped to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Jesus is the first born again human being. And you, I don't know what number you are. I don't know what number I am, but we are all numbered in the family of God, the born again believers, the human beings that have the Holy Spirit living on the inside, that we are born again in the image and likeness of Jesus. Hallelujah. We've been given the righteousness of God. Glory to God. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified. He gave us your righteousness. All of our righteousness was as filthy rag, but God gave us his righteousness. It's a gift from God. Hallelujah. You've been justified. You can go before the Lord without a sense of guilt or condemnation or any such thing. You can come boldly through the throne of grace and say, Abba, Father, I need you. Glory to God. You can call on his name and, and he said, what you need, baby? I'm here for you. I know what you have need of, but tell me, tell me. So when I provide it for you, you can give me the glory. You can give me the honor. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And who be justified? Them he also glorified. Oh, hallelujah. You've been glorified. You've been glorified. The, thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Hallelujah. What shall we then say to these things? If God is for you, who can be against you? Glory. Hallelujah. If God is on your side, what can man do unto you? Glory to God. Feed the greatness that's on the inside of you. Put that word. Get the word of God. Whatever you've been challenged with, get the word of God and boldly proclaim it and remind your born again spirit who you are and whose you are in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Keep going. I ain't done. I ain't done. I'm going all the way to 39. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? What is it that you need? What is it that you need? God said, I give it to you. I give it to you free of charge. It's already been paid for by the blood of Jesus Christ. It's already been paid for on a cross at Calvary. Hallelujah. He said, it's finished. Glory to God. Your healing is already manifested. Your provision is already manifested. Your loved one coming back home is already manifested. Whatever it is that you need, God said, I freely give it to you in the name, in the name, in the name, in the name, in the name that is above it. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? God has made you righteous. God has just.
justify who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect who God has justified us hallelujah who is he that condemneth it is Christ that died yea rose that and is risen again who is even at the right hand of God who also maketh intercession he didn't stop he's still working he's still praying he's still crying out to God on our behalf hallelujah oh glory to God he didn't leave you he didn't forsake you God is interceding and saying baby girl baby boy keep running keep feeding the greatness on the inside of you there's more there's more there's more there's more I have this for you don't give up don't give in let God be God and I'll show you I'll give you the victory you'll see the end of the story glory to God and you'll raise your hand in victory in Jesus name hallelujah who shall separate us from the love of Christ Shall tribulation? No. Shall distress? No. Or persecution? Or famine? Or nakedness? Or peril? Or war? Nothing, 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 Thank you.